Okay, guys, here we go. Get be ready for a lot of talking. All right. So generally online, there's some really dumb conversations like this: is the log arch you have to use. Here's the blueprints. This is what you have to do, whatever. And it's generally descends into a retarded conversation because it takes nothing into account. It takes, you know, are you logging in the mountains? Are you logging up north where you're scanning out snow and ice? Are you down south where you're never scanning out snow and ice? Are you in flat country? Are you in big timber, small timber? Is the person that's going to be using this arch to have bad knees? You know, are you going to be in more open woods, tired woods? There's a million and one questions that never get brought up, generally speaking. And so, I just want to kind of start plowing through here. And I built over half a dozen arches, well, more than that. And I just kind of wanted to go over some things that I've learned that someone starting out with a budget and maybe those people with some steel laying around might be able to find useful. Um, or some things that I like or I prefer. And I'm not a professional, I'm not a real great welder, builder, or anything else. It's just. Some things that I've learned by going and doing. Um, and this is set up for a Western style harness. I probably won't get into why I'm using Western style harness, but yes, I own D ring harnesses. I do know how to sum up properly. It is the best harness for a log arch, and probably won't even get into that. All right. So if you're going to be running big power through these things, and you know if you have a team that knows how to pull, or you're going to be going four up or whatever, normal latches do not hold up. You need to reinforce that thing. That's half inch, three inch angle. That this one fell off is only 16 inches wide. But even with it being only 16 inches wide, I, we have to reinforce it in the middle where the power is going to be at, or it will rip it right out of uh, the play with it and it even a big team that knows how to pull it happens uh, rather quickly if you're in big timber so for us the tires and spindles that we use I'm using this Olenberg axle because it just makes sense for us this is what our log wagons have and so I build this, these log arches out of these axles because if a bearing goes down, the tire goes flat, we got extra parts right there on the job site and we can just cruise on with our day, swap out things you know, real quick and easy. And so it just makes sense for us as far as that goes. Three things I like to build for arches to have on there is a spot for my log and tongs, which is you know what I'm doing right here, just a hook deal for the log and tongs the PV hook and chainsaw and the way I set the, my piece up for the chainsaw is not that it stays on there all day but I carry in the woods with me or to different spots and then at the end of the day it comes out with me but it's not all that in a bag of chips but I do find it handy for sure I love that concrete saw mm, that saves me time Alright, wind tongues. So, this log arch has been set up for a western style harness, and so the, the light, the weight of the wood tongue is great, but for the balance, but also, if something does go terribly wrong, I actually want that tongue to be able to break. I've actually never broken one of these tongues. I have broken wind tongues in, in the past, but if some you know if you're on the hillsides things can, can get crazy so I, I like the one tongue for that these kickers these round kickers are the way to uh, go it's works so much better than square kickers don't ask me why I don't understand it but those kickers being round work way better and so yeah a uh, little tidbit there let's see where we're at. And you see there in the middle where that latch is kind of reinforced with a hook to it. Keeps from bowing down and bowing out. And that's a must. I actually made just a one steel. Because I knew what type of power we were going to be running through it. But I believe that one would hold up. 
All right, line of draft. So again, I'm doing this for a Western Star harness. So the height of my chain, the height my double tree pulls from, is about half inch, three quarters of an inch lower than the height I put my chain at. What that does, allow, when that horse is in a pull, that tongue floats. It doesn't come all the way back, but it floats and it takes the weight off their necks. So, and that other hook right here, that's for when we go four up. So that's why there's two hooks there. That's kind of handy. So next, I think we'll get into stave chains. I'll show you on Jeff's arch here. We use stave chains, and that again, it's made for the Western. This part is made for a Western style harness, and so the stave chains take the you know, the tongue swinging left and right and wearing your horse's necks out. It takes that out, out of the picture. And you have to pay attention to your driving, or you can let bad habits slip in there. But, you know, you need to be paying attention to your driving anyhow, so it's not a deal breaker for me. You see the stave chains that it's set up on Jeff's. Also, because made for for a D ring or for a Western style harness, the seat is cantilevered over the back. Uh, I don't do a good job showing, but the seat's cantilevered over the back of these. And when you sit down, that also makes the tongue very light. You adjust your seat to how much you weigh, and you can really dial that in. Also, when the log is hanging from the arch, if you get a log airborne, it's actually picking up ever so slightly on that tongue so anyway guys um, I appreciate it and that's just a few things that I've learned and yeah okay guys something I forgot to mention I like the latch to be in the middle and I like it to be just a latch you can just you know pull touch and I, I, it's offset enough where you can get to it from the left or right if the cart does flip it's out of the way to see, but if you're on a hillside and you float and you get bound up in a bad way or something of that nature, you need to be able to get to it from both sides, and I like to be able to release the load without a lot of physical strain. When you're talking to your team, if something does go wrong, it's cart flip, something happens, you need to be able to calm your team down with your voice, but also if you're in a physical strain and twist on a lever real hard, that makes it more difficult to do it. So, uh, just one thing I forgot. I probably forgot a whole bunch of other things. And guys, it, put in the comments what you learned and what you know worked good for you. And I appreciate it. Have a good one.